So on my right, we've got a 600 amp Bulldog Clamp-Matic vacuum brake. And on my left, we have a Cleveland switchboard full of Claymore mines. We're gonna be replacing all this equipment with real-time, up-to-date electrical equipment. These are some of my most favorite jobs. I'm definitely hoping to wear a tool belt on this one. There's more to see, stick around. Hey, so here to take a look at this new property. When did you guys acquire this? So we're actually in the process of acquiring it now from okay. uh, one of the uh, buyer's friends. Um, kind of going to be a deal, work out, but we'll get in here and renovate it. And obviously one of the key things we need to do is figure out how we're going to work this electric to suit our needs. Right, so this is kind of an inspection process, due diligence to yeah. determine the sale value, go, no go. Yeah, just to figure out if it's going to make sense for us to come in here and do what we need to do to make it work for us with the amount of money we have to work with. Nice. Yep. Great. And what's best? I want to put in the uh, plenty of effort to give you exactly what you want. Do you want a, a budget? Do you want feasibility? Is it both? Both, yeah. Um, we've got some equipment in here that the previous owner, the current owner, has. He's stockpiled. Um, so we want to find out if that's going to work okay. and then make a determination of if we have enough power. I think we do. Nice. Um, and just, yeah, feasibility and how much is it going to cost to get us where we need to be. Okay, great. And do you know what this is zoned or what the intended use will be? The intended use will be we'll have retail up front Okay. and then uh, just dry storage warehouse in the back. Nice. Like um, basic lights. Yep and very, very basic plugs back there. Yep, in the warehouse, we'll just be doing basically just lighting um, and, you know, plugs every, whatever minimum code is. Uh, retail, obviously we'll have a little more effort up there, making sure we have the right kind of lighting. Uh, it's gonna suit the space and the proper number of outlets and whatnot. Okay, all right, will you be white boxing the retail space in preparation for a speculative tenant? Correct. Okay. Yep. And you want me to quote that up just as you've described? Exactly. Yep. We've got some plans here. Ah, nice. We'll, we'll get in there. You'll see it's it's nowhere near this yet. It's nowhere near this. So there's not a whole lot of demo that's going to happen in here. A little bit. Mostly it's clean out. There's a lot of old, you'll see, restaurant equipment and just nice. random things that yeah. accumulated over the years that we'll have to get out. But people love to throw in buildings like this. Yes, exactly. Leave it out yeah. of sight, out of mind. Take a look inside. All right, let's do it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Ooh, it's d very damp. Right, so well, that's yeah, to be expected. It helps your purchase you price. The water. Yeah. So, lots of roof issues. Uh, this is the worst of it. You know, where we've got actual breakthrough on the metal uh, decking. So we'll get that taken care of. Uh, Obviously prior to yeah. our electrical getting done. Yeah, as you know, it's got to be fully dried in before we can, you know, lawfully pull any wire in here. Yeah. But this is this is where I've seen guys make the most money is when there's extensive termite damage, water damage. Those are the projects you can really slam dunk and turn some some revenue. Yeah, for sure. The ones that are, you know, most guys look at, and, uh, nah, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, nope. it's too heavy a lift, yeah. too dirty, whatever it is. You can run the numbers a bunch of different ways and make things like this work. You can. Yeah. Well, it goes way back. Man, you've got 10,000 square feet, you said? Yeah, which is part of what makes a building great is that we can subdivide it for a multi-use. Yeah. So we can get some good, really good return on investment from the retail and then make up some difference here on the back. Back end, centrally located bathrooms so we can equally share without having too many crossover issues. Mm. Um, and very little of the building will be common space, which cuts down on your, your total return there by quite a bit. Yeah, so. that's good. Everybody's got their own interior, exterior um, space and access yep. and space for signage. Or, uh, yeah, exactly. So this space here will split down in the middle, um, have two retail, at least the plan now is two retail over here, one retail on the other side of the block wall. Great. Um, and again, just white box so that whoever's looking to start their business or move up to an actual retail brick front, brick and mortar, mm -hmm. they can do so. That's nice. What are you thinking about the ceiling treatment? Uh, drop ceiling or leave it exposed to the deck? So originally we were thinking drop ceiling, uh, but with the square footage, it's like $15,000 just in cost. So um, thinking if we can clean it up and yeah. paint it. Oh, love it. Just make it look nice. And there's 
Nothing wrong with it. I mean, you see all the chains go in that direction, right? Yeah. Uh, Chipotle, Qdoba, exactly. McDonald's, yeah. like they just paint. And especially if you're replacing the roof, you can get your R value on top of the roof yeah. through the phone. Yeah. Do you need any recommendations on subs here? Um, on, on subcontractors, roofing? Sure. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. If you spot a couple, uh, uh, you know, gaps in your sub pool, I'd love to fill, help you fill some of those yeah, with some plumbers. recommendations. Always looking for plumbers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Plumbers are tricky. You know, they you are. pay more than you expect to yes. and get a little bit less than you'd like. Usually. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's like, really that much for that? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. There's just not enough plumbers. But you got to have it. So. Yeah, this is beautiful. I love this kind of space. I think my creative juices are like yeah, there's a lot stirred. Do. Yeah. Do you want us to include uh, construction power, uh, construction lighting through here to have a couple lights? You know, I'm thinking like ten to just throw off a bunch of omnidirectional light and keep things safe. Not too dissimilar from this. Um, I like this one. Just like what we got. Okay. These yeah. are actually. It was very bright. I've always kind of shied away from those for whatever reason. I thought they were kind of gimmicky, but they put out some, some light. Yeah, they do. Look at that. So here you go. Okay, time to start my file and company cam and snap some photos here. Wow. Um, desired course of action. Trying to salvage, repurpose to keep costs low? Yeah. So. From what I can tell, we have 600 amp three phase. Looks got accurate. 600 amp total in meter base back there. Four of them are combined, then we got a standalone. Um, we'd like to try to use those. Whatever you want. For here. We got mm -hmm. one, two, three retails, warehouse, and then uh, house power. So, okay. We split it five ways, um, which of course allows us to push all utilities to. The tenants, you know, if there's no crossover mm -hmm. on use, then whatever you use is what you pay. Yeah, is a good model. So, do you need a one house meter for exterior lighting, or would that be associated with the tenant whose egress it serves? So, I think we put all common space and exterior on on house. Okay, so one house meter. And how are you referring to this project? Has it got like a pet name yet? Uh, Keystone. Keystone. We're pretty original. Yeah, that's good. So on my right, we've got a 600 amp Bulldog Clamp-Matic vacuum brake. And on my left, we have a Cleveland switchboard full of Claymore mines. We're gonna be replacing all this equipment with real-time, up-to-date electrical equipment. These are some of my most favorite jobs. I'm definitely hoping to wear a tool belt on this one. There's more to see, stick around. All right, let's look at that equipment that okay. you've got yep. and take a quick look outside too. I'm curious to see what maybe value opportunities there may be. The, this, as you know, that equipment gets pretty pricey. So that is, that says 200 amp. Mm -hmm. Those are each, they have 100 amp breakers on them, but I don't know what this is having. Let's see. Did that, did you find anything in here? This is the interrupting current. Here it is. One twenty-five on the meter socket. Uh, so we'd have to replace the breakers that are. Which might not be a bad idea, anyways. Is it, was this in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. All of it was. Cool, cool. Um, What would you take a look at that? That was fine back in its day. And the Federal Pacific here on my right, but not to be outdone. Violation of 110.26. We have the Cleveland switchboard. Man, I can't wait to dig around in this stuff. So five is your goal? Five Remind is me. Goal, yep. Five is the goal, okay. One warehouse, one house. And is this your? Retail or warehouse, the 200? Probably warehouse. Well, okay. or honestly, probably wouldn't matter. I mean, 125, I think it's gonna be plenty for retail. 125 would be plenty for house. That should probably go warehouse. But again, we're not pulling on, or playing on a big power draw. So it shouldn't really matter which one. 
What are you thinking on HVAC? Is the whole space on a single rooftop no. so package unit? The plan now is to do mini splits, one for each retail. Okay. Um, and then in throughout here, we would just have ceiling mounted forced air, gas, natural gas. Nice. Any air conditioning back here? No. Okay. No, not in the warehouse. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. And we will have offices, but um, so that could, could change the HVAC. Now that I think about it, so we've got you obviously can't dump it from a mini split. So um, either way, it wouldn't be anything crazy per space. Mm -hmm. You know what would be a creative solution? You could do a zoned solution, so you'd have a larger uh, furnace, gas furnace mm -hmm. that was capable of heating the whole space, but then you'd have a office zone with a thermostat in there. So when the, it calls for cooling, it's only the offices that call for cooling and your condenser is much, much smaller. Yeah. So you've got just a couple grand in the condenser just capable of conditioning the offices yeah. and the warehouses just heat. So we'll look into it. Yeah. Okay, and that's for me understanding the loads on the yeah. space. It's um, gas, heat, mini splits, potential air conditioning for offices. Right, so just know that retail will be all electric as far as HVAC goes, back here will be gas. Okay, so. cool. So the limitation, 125 amps, just sort of thinking big picture here real quick. On an all electric retail space, you're not gonna get any food service in here, no. but you're good with that. No, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We don't want food service. Don't want it, okay. <laughs> Basically just lighting and convenience outlets and yeah. basic tech yep. equipment yep. Yep. cool nice okay um i'd love to hit the outside real quick and look okay. at the outside of that too yeah. you want to go, go around that way yeah okay so part of the you've experienced this before <laughs> i need to revisit the uh albany and and you've been through all of this you've been through all this uh, so it's a four wire overhead service um i'd have to take a look at it for a minute to find out um it's three phase but whether it's high lake delta or 208 why um, the equipment's got to be on the outside they're not gonna you right so do you want it at this location you like the centralization of it yeah i don't see any issues with being here um, this would be parking and whatnot so we may have to throw the bollards throw up the bollards in but yeah. other than that i don't think there's necessarily a better space on the building to put it okay all right well with your permission i'll go ahead and contact the engineer and get metering out here do you want to be present for that meeting Sure. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. I'll notify you. They're usually two weeks out. We've we've not had bad winter weather, so that frees yeah. up everybody's schedule because construction slows down a little bit, but they don't have all these ice storms and outages right. to deal with. So I will make that call. We'll, we'll set up an on-site and figure out what they'll give us. That's when we'll get approval on that meter base or okay. find out if we have to go a different direction. Yeah. And I think I've got my marching orders here. Um, you know how our estimates work. We're real, real specific. So if I didn't list it, it's not included. Yep. Um, and so you'll get about two, two, three pages of that. Any questions for me? Not really. Uh, you and I have been through a few projects now. So yeah. I, I know that you're going to ask questions on anything you don't know and you'll give us a good quote and it'll be all encompassing. So appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be beautiful. The new electrical equipment's going to go here. We've got to get approval from the utility engineer, but I love this kind of job. I absolutely love this kind of job. We're still pre-contract, but if we win it, we're going to wear the tool belt and walk you through step by step. This is the easiest way to make 70K. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.